So this is the part where I talk to you about dot and cross products. And I, I don't like the way people normally teach this. They teach them as two separate things, but really I think they're the same thing. And, and you'll see when I, when I draw it out this way. So on the left, I'm gonna talk about dot products. Now the right, I'm gonna talk about cross products. Now, if you think about this purely geometrically and ignore the component form of stuff, the dot and the cross products look incredibly alike. So we call the dot product a dot product because we put a dot between two vectors. And the cross product is the cross product because we put a cross between the two vectors, right? Um, right off the bat, the first thing you notice is that this is gonna equal some scalar, a scalar, right? Whereas this is gonna equal some vector, okay? So this is a scalar. This is a vector. Okay, so just remember dot products give you scalars, cross products give you vectors. Um, if you're wondering, yes, this will plague you for the rest of the conversation, trying to remember which one is which. The second thing to remember is that when you dot product, the, the length or the scalar is A, B, cosine theta. Whereas the length of the cross product is A, B, sine theta. So you see how similar these are? Um, the only difference is that since this is a vector, you need some kind of, like, um, I'm gonna call it n hat for the normal. We'll talk about that in a second. So really briefly, um, you should get into this habit when you're doing physics. Whenever you see a formula like this, you should always think what it really means, right? And what this means is that it's, if A doubles in size, then the dot product is gonna double in size. If it quadruples in size, then the dot product quadruples in size. If you have it, then the dot product is gonna be halved. And the same is true for this, the cross product. If you take any of these A, A or B vectors and double their size or, or quadruple their size, then the cross product will be doubled or quadrupled. It's proportional, right? Cosine theta, sine theta. Well, remember from your trigonometry that cosine theta can vary from one and it goes down to zero at 90 degrees and then at negative, um, or at 180 degrees, it goes to negative one, right? Whereas sine starts off at zero, and at 90 degrees it becomes one, and at 180 degrees it's zero again, right? So, um, so at zero degrees, at pi degrees, oh, pi over two, and at pi degrees. At zero degrees, at pi over two, and at pi degrees. Or if you're not comfortable with this yet, then you have zero degrees, 90 degrees, and 180 degrees, right? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, and 180 degrees. And we really need not consider any other value for sine and cosine because the vectors themselves, um, you know, at, at worst they're gonna point opposite and that's 180 degrees. If they start to wrap around back on themselves and that's a smaller angle between the two, right? So um, this dot product is maximized. It's maximum maximized to the product of the links of the vectors when you have the two vectors aligned, pointing the same direction. Okay, so dot product tells you how parallel, right? They are. Whereas the cross product is maximized when they're perpendicular. So this will tell you how perpendicular they are. I fit the R in there, good job. Okay, so how parallel they are, how perpendicular they are. The one weird note, since this is a scalar, we don't need to consider the direction of the dot product. Since this is a vector, we have to consider the direction, and the only rule is that n hat must be perpendicular to a vector, and n hat must be perpendicular to the b vector. So basically, the cross product has to be perpendicular to both of the products, both of the, the vectors that make up the product. And how you determine which direction it is? Well, let's imagine we have our a vector pointing off that way, and we have our B vector pointing off that way. Well, in the plane of this paper, if you chose something perpendicular to A, it's obviously not perpendicular to B. And conversely, if it's perpendicular to B, it's not perpendicular to A. What you have to do is get out of the page plane and deal with vectors that point into or out of the page. And if we're gonna follow the right hand rule, which we will, we're not gonna talk about what happens when you use left hand rule for cross products. The way you do this is you take your right hand and you align it in the direction of A like this. 
so this is pointing the A. Then you take your fingers and curl it towards B, right? So now it's it's kind of fixed. You can't, you know, if you're going to curl it towards B, you have to have your hand a certain way, and your thumb is going to point in the direction of the cross product. So we're going to draw that with a circle, with a dot, representing a vector coming out of the page, straight out of the page. Um, that's the right hand rule. If you Another, you might see people also do this with their fingers. So this is the first vector A, this is the first vector B, and then the thumb of necessity must point in the direction of the cross product. The um, similarities, that's not the end of the similarities. Aside from this point, the direction of the vector that, that is the cross product, you'll see that they have a couple of interesting properties. One for the dot product. Um, if you take A vector dot B vector, that's the same as B vector dot A vector. Right? The order doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. Um, and that's the uh, commutative. So it's commutative. Right? The other interesting thing is that the distributive property. So you have a vector dot the sum of b's and c vectors. That's the same as a vector dot b vector plus a vector dot c vector. That'll come in useful use later as we think about it. Um, because the vectors are maximized when they're parallel, an interesting result happens when we do a vector dot a vector, and that gives you basically a squared. Okay, so, and sometimes you'll see they'll, they'll just skip this step altogether and just write a squared when you're dotting a vector with itself. And indeed, the same rules hold for cross products with one curious Um, uh, property that it's anti-commutative. That means if you reverse the vectors, then the cross product points in the exactly opposite direction. Well, obviously, if you take your hand in the B direction, curl it towards A, or use your fingers, whatever, the, the cross product is going to point exactly opposite when you reverse the two. So the order is very important for the cross product. Order doesn't matter. Order is important. And the distributive property works the way you'd expect it. Um, let me double check this. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry, a vector cross c vector. This is where I pull out the white out. Um, I'm going to blow on that for a minute while I talk about what that means. So, um, it's not going to work, is it? Uh, squeeze. Okay, forget it. It's not working. Um, I like whiteboards. I don't like drawing on paper. Let me write it again so you can see it in its full glory. Okay, so it's distributive. Um, it's anti-commutative. And it's distributive. Okay. And the other interesting result is that if you cross a vector with itself, then you get zero, because they're parallel with each other. Any vector cross any vector that's parallel or anti-parallel is zero, because sine theta will give you zero. Um, so that's kind of a, a fun little comparison of those two, the dot product and the cross product. Um, I think people get hung up on the component form of the cross product, and they never really see the cross product for what it really is. Um, so. Huh.